Hi guys, this is Melissa with Sew Yours Patterns. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making my newest sewing pattern, the Fold and Go Wallet. As you can see here, it's not just a wallet. You can make it a crossbody, or you can go ahead and do a wristlet strap right here. So this is a very versatile wallet. Another option that you can do is you can actually carry this one around your waist. Um, just uh, have this crossbody strap, um, wrap it around your waist. You could probably even slip it through your belt, uh, belt uh, loops on your pants as well um, and then make that um, to the size of your waist and you can keep that nice and handy along your waist um, that's excellent for theme parks or if you're hiking uh, you don't want to have to worry about having a strap across your body the entire day um, so that's another option so fanny pack style um, this is the wallet I've been carrying for the last couple of weeks and I absolutely love it um, you can store so many items in it so I'm going to go ahead and show you um, the features of this wallet so let's just take off this crossbody strap right here. Um, so again, you can go ahead and add the, the wristlet if you want. Um, but if you want to just go ahead and make this as a wallet, if you don't like to carry crossbodies, um, you can go ahead and keep this portion right here off of the wallet. This is the strap connector with the two D-rings. I've also designed this so that way if you're not carrying it as a crossbody or a wristlet at the time, you can kind of just flip these over and close up the wallet. That way you don't see them um, from the outside. I don't like usually seeing the little um, strap connector and the D-ring hanging outside of my wallet if I'm not actually using that at the moment. So that's an, an option for you right there. Um, now I have done a twist or a turn lock right here on the outside. Um, definitely recommend that if you're doing the uh, crossbody strap or the wristlet. That way it keeps everything nice and secure. It's not going to flop open on your you. Um, but if you are just making this as a wallet only, you can certainly swap out this twist or turn lock right here for a magnetic snap. That's a great alternative. Inside the wallet here, we have six card slots at the top and we have six card slots at the bottom. We have a place right here to keep your money or receipts if you like to keep your receipts in there. Um, and then an additional slot right here that you can keep additional items in. Right now I currently have a little notebook that I keep handy for any ideas that I might have that I need to jot down. We also have um, a, a, a little slot right here. This is a piece of elastic to carry uh, your pen. Keep that nice and handy. And we have two zipper pockets right here. Keep your change in there or any other small items that you might have. And one of the best features of this wallet that I think, and what I went ahead and designed it in mine, is a place just for your phone that's nice and quick and easy access. So right here, this holds your phone. And this is a Samsung Galaxy S7, but this holds those larger phones like an iPhone 6S Plus. So you can see right here, there's a lot of room. Um, so it, it, it's very versatile with the size of phone that it carries. So this is the Fold and Go Wallet. We're going to make this today. Let me show you a couple of the other options that we have. In this particular wallet, I've done a little bit of a different clasp here. So you just pop it open. And I did not uh, do the crossbody um, strap connector here. So that's this one. I have another version right here. Again, I think this one I did uh, without the wallet, or excuse me, without the uh, crossbody uh, strap connector there. And this one I've done in a contrasting a fabric here for the flap. So that's another option for you. So we have that one. And depending on the length of your, uh, your, your um, wristlet that you create, this one I want short because I like to keep them really nice and tight around my, my wrists. Um, you could just go ahead and keep it stored right at the top like that and tuck it away if you're just going to use it as a wallet. Here is another version. Now this one I did do some denim for the lining. I found that to be just a little bit more tricky to sew when I had to top stitch at the very end because um, it is a little bit of a thicker fabric. Um, so right here um, along the phone pocket, that can be tricky to top stitch if you're using a uh, fabric that is anything other than quilting cotton. So depending on the type of machine that you have, um, if you're just doing a domestic machine um, or a semi-industrial, I would definitely recommend sticking with quilting cotton for your fold and go wallet. So that is our fold and go wallet. 
So we're going to go ahead and make that today. Um, go ahead and purchase the pattern at SewYourPatterns.com. You can go ahead and print it off from your computer um, and start working right along with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead next and show you all of the pattern pieces that make up this particular wallet. And we'll go ahead and get on into sewing it today. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so the very first portion that I want to show you is the exterior of the wallet. We have our flap, so this front flap closure right here, that's this piece. Um, most of our pieces are going to be lined with SF-101 on the back, or you can go with SoFuse. Um, for me, I've been using SoFuse lately, and I really like that. So I've got the SoFuse on the back of this flap. This is the actual body of the wallet, so it's going to be this portion here and here so like this whole back portion right there that's what that piece is so that one also has your interfacing on so sf 101 or so fuse now once i join the um, flap to the actual body of the wallet i will be adding a layer of um, stabilizer so you can do deck of a light um, right here i have some so fuse plus that i'll be using I'm also going to cut an additional piece of SoFuse Plus because that's just a little bit lighter weight than your deck of a light. Um, and I'm going to be adding it to my flap. I forgot to do that, so I'll do that in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to keep the SoFuse Plus um, out of the top 3 eighths of an inch um, from the straight edge right here. Um, so to keep that out of my seam allowance. And that's just going to give it a little bit more stability, just like your deck of a light that you have. This is our lining piece. Again, with the SF-101 or your um, SoFuse, here is our phone pocket. So we have the exterior piece with the interfacing. In addition, we have our uh, SoFuse Plus or Decaville Lite. I have a pattern piece that I've created that um, is going to be perfect for keeping the stabilizer out of your seam allowance. Here is the lining portion of that pocket with just your interfacing. And here is our phone pocket flap. Again, this is going to have, each piece is going to have your SoFuse or your SF-101. Um, and then the exterior piece is also going to have a piece of SoFuse Plus or Deck of a Light. The, let's see here, the strap. Um, I am working with one yard of fabric here, so I didn't have a long enough piece. So I'm going to first join two pieces together for the strap, and then I'm going to add my interfacing. I'll show you how to do that in the video later. So you don't need to have an entire 55 or 60 inches, whatever you're making your strap length um, at. So you can go ahead and piece it together, and you really don't even notice it once you do that. This is our strap connector piece. Um, it's going to have your interfacing on it. Here is our carb slots. So these are the card slot backings. We are not doing any interfacing on these. And we, when we create our card slots, we're gonna do that all at once. So two card slots at once. And essentially what you're doing here is, I'm just gonna show you real quick, you're gonna basically accordion fold um, like this, and then it's gonna be cut right in half. And then you're gonna have your two different card slots. So the top portion one here, and then the bottom one. And in order to make these, those card slots a little bit more stable, we're gonna add a strip of um, SF-101 just to the top edges. Um, that way it keeps the bulk down, but it gives it a little bit of stability right along the top edge. So that's what these eight pieces of um, SoFuse is. So SoFuse or your SF-101, so we have those. And then our zipper pocket. So here we have our exterior pieces of our zipper pocket. And then we have four lining pieces here. The lining pieces do not have any interfacing on, just your exterior pieces right there, which is just the SoFuse or your SF-101. And these are our zipper ends. So right here's the zipper ends that I'm talking about. And when we create this pocket, we're doing one pocket at once. So basically you're gonna have a zipper right here and a zipper at the bottom. I'd highly recommend watching the video for this portion because it can be a little bit tricky um, when constructing it. I also recommend watching the portion of the video for the card slots as well because um, if you've never made a wallet before, it might be a little bit tricky. 
Um, so that is all of the different pieces that make up the Fold and Go wallet. I look forward to sewing along with you to make this really, really cool wallet that I think you're going to love. Again, purchase the pattern at SewYoursPatterns.com. And go ahead and join our Facebook group as well. We have about 1,300 um, bag makers in the group that like to ask questions about our patterns. Um, they also show photos of their completed bags or now wallets that they're going to be making um, in the group. We also do some daily um, topics like a sew and tell and sewing chat. Uh, we also do a thankful Thursday, so a lot of great activities and inter interactions are going on in our community. So we'd love to have you there. So let's go ahead and start sewing up the Fold and Go wallet. All right, let's quickly go over the hardware that you're going to need. Um, you're going to need two swivel clasps that are three-fourths of an inch and a strap slider here, again, three-fourths of an inch, as well as your D-rings. These are optional um, if you're doing the crossbody strap. Then we have our zipper tape. Um, you're going to need either two 8-inch zippers that are number 3 or number 5, or you're going to need um, 6 and 3 quarter inch zipper tape, which I've got here. Um, I've got my number 3 uh, zipper pulls as well, two of those. Um, I am doing the crossbody strap, so therefore I need to do the turn lock. Um, so I've got my turn lock here with the washer. I have my magnetic snap here for my phone pocket. So if you're not doing the crossbody strap, you can do two uh, magnetic snaps if you want um, instead of the turn lock. So that's the hardware that we're going to be using. for. All right, we're going to start by sewing our wristlet strap. I've already kind of prepped this out. What I've done is I first started by folding the wristlet strap in half and pressed it with an iron, opened it back up, and I pressed in these long raw edges to that uh, center fold there and pressed it with an iron again and then refolded it back in half and gave it a good press. Um, I've then gone ahead and added um, on a swivel clasp. I, I forgot to show you that there, you, you will actually need three swivel clasps in total if you're making the crossbody strap as well as the wristlet. So make sure you get this slit on now. Um, I know many times myself I have forgotten to uh, put that on before I begin sewing the wristlet strap. So get that put on. And what we're going to do is we're going to open this back up here. And as you can see, I have left the... Um, so fuse or your SF-101 out of the seam allowance here um, so that way it's not so bulky. We're going to match those up and sew along this short raw edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance right now. Okay, once you do that, clip it right side out. And now I like to go ahead and fold over my seam allowance to one side and do a quick one eighth of an inch top stitch. Okay, and then we just go ahead and we're going to be folding everything in towards the center again. So you can see here that our hardware is on there, and it's all um, one loop here. Now what we need to do is we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along first the open side here, and then the other side. So get that done, and while you're doing this, you're going to have to kind of move that hardware out of the way as you're sewing along. Okay, um, now that we've got that sewn, what I want to do is go ahead and find that center seam that we did, which is right here, and we're going to bring our hardware right down to where that is and get it right in the middle. And we're going to, um, you can either sew a couple of lines of stitching here or even a box with an X in it um, to get that secured on. Uh, I prefer to use uh, rivets, so I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole for my rivet. A six millimeter rivet will be sufficient. 
And there you have it. I'll go ahead and get that set off camera. All right, now it's time to make our crossbody strap. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have uh, a long enough piece of fabric to do one continuous piece. So we are piecing together two pieces. Um, rather than piecing them together um, evenly, like the edges just like this, um, and sewing, um, we don't want to do that because that kind of creates some um, extra bulk whenever we are um, folding it all into place. Um, we're going to distribute that um, seam evenly. And in order to do that, you want to go ahead and place uh, two pieces of fabric right side together and um, at this angle like we have it, like a right angle right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing at this bottom corner right here and bringing it up to meet this corner. So this is what the back side looks like. And that's going to create our angle that we need to join the two pieces together. Now I do do this without interfacing to start. Um, I'd like to add that later on, again, just because it reduces the bulk. Now you can draw a line if you need to. Um, I just kind of eyeball it and I've got my finger here to kind of tell me where the, the corner is. All right, there we have that. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to cut off the extra here to about a um, quarter of an inch. Let me grab my scissors. And then once we've done that, um, I like to open it back up. And you can see, once we do that, um, we've got now a nice straight piece. And I like to open my seams flat. You could push them to one side if you want. Um, but I like to do it flat. So I'm opening them up just like this. And I'm going to top stitch on the left and the right side at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to pivot. All right. And there is how we join it. Um, it's a little bit off here, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim it with my scissors. Not a big deal because we're going to be folding this anyways. And here's the back side. So now I'm going to take this over to the um, iron, um, iron on my interfacing, keeping it out of my seam allowance by about a half of an inch here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start pressing, folding it in half down the middle and pressing it with the iron, folding it back open. This is just like the crossbody strap and folding the raw, inch, raw end in to meet the center fold on both sides like this. And then I'll come back and fold it one more time and press it with an iron so that we can um, have our strap ready to top stitch. All right, I have my strap all ready um, and prepped to sew. And I wanted to show you the section here that I went ahead and uh, pieced together. It's almost impossible to see, especially when you're working with printed fabric, uh, but the seam is right here. When I flip it over, it's down here. So that way that bulk is distributed a lot more evenly and it's very difficult to see where that seam is. Um, so now uh, you can see here, this is what I've done. Um, just like the wristlet strap, everything's folded to the center. I do wanna show you uh, a method of finishing your ends here so that they're not raw, um, that you might not be familiar with. I did do a video on this a couple of days ago. So if you didn't uh, get a chance to see that, I'm doing it now. Um, instead of just beginning to sew right now or uh, folding this raw edge in like this and folding it in and sewing it, what I'm going to do on this particular strap is I am going to go ahead and have it folded like this and then I'm going to kind of invert that fold and have it opposite, get everything matched up nicely here at the top and I'm just going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top edge here. Once I do that, I want to trim a little bit off of each corner to reduce the bulk when I turn this right side out. So there I have um, it trimmed down. 
Now we just want to flip it back so it's right side out. And you can use your scissors or a turning tool uh, to get that corner pulled out. And there you have it. You have a nice uh, finished edge here. Uh, so that way when we go ahead and join this to our hardware, um, you don't have any raw edges or you don't have to do any additional folds. Um, this is my preferred method for uh, finishing off your ends on cotton fabric. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and do that on the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch on an eighth of an inch seam allowance uh, down the left and the right side of the strap. So let me go ahead and get all that done. All right, let me show you now how to go ahead and add the hardware to the crossbody strap. You'll need your two swivel clasps and your strap slider, or also known as a tri-glide. Start with your tri-glide and insert it into one end. We're going to wrap it around this center bar here and fold it over about two inches. I'm going to use a clip to clip it into place right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this kind of straight as I follow my hand down the end. Okay, to find the um, other side, you're going to go ahead and insert your swivel clasp. And we're going to take that and bring it through this side that has the, the portion folded over. We're going to go up through here. Okay, and then just making sure that there's no twist in our strap. So this is good right here. Then what we want to do is we're going to feed this other end back through this side. And now we're going to go ahead and insert the other swivel clasp and fold it over two inches. And what I like to do now um, with my strap is I like to go ahead and make sure that um, it's working properly. I didn't um, go ahead and secure it in the wrong location. So you just go ahead and and fiddle with it and make sure that it's adjusting as, as it should be if this one is done properly. Another tip I have for you is if you're kind of new to doing adjustable straps is to go ahead and grab one off of one of your other purses and kind of look at how it's been put together to help you along the way. Um, so everything looks good here. What I'm going to do is um, I prefer to do the rivets so I'm going to put two rivets in here off camera so that it's uh, secured in place but you can certainly go ahead and do a couple rows of stitching or the box with the X through it to make it secured. Um, and then do the same thing on this center portion right here. Um, you want to make sure that you've clipped it properly and you're only doing this little the center bar portion right here and um, doing your rivets or your stitching here. Um, I know a couple times when I first started doing my straps I accidentally had it um, clipped to this side and that will not make your strap work. So just like I showed you before, um, in the center bar here, that's the one that you're going to go ahead and stitch or rivet in place. So again, I'll do this off camera, um, and you'll be able to see the completed strap at the All right, now it's time to make our card slots. You'll need your large card slot piece, your eight interfacing pieces, as well as your two card slot back pieces. I've already prepped out my card slots here. I'll explain what I did. Um, the first thing that you want to do is find your 18 inch measurement side, which is going to be this side right here, it's 18 inches. I've marked it as top, so I've written top on here with a removable marking pen. Then I went ahead and found my center and drew a vertical line down the center. That's essentially going to tell me that this is going to be one card slot section and this will be the second one once we divide it in half. From there, with the assistance of my grid mat here, um, a cutting mat and my ruler, um, I went ahead and started doing my measurements like the pattern says. Um, we're going to start using this top raw edge, measure down two and a half inches, and we're going to go ahead and draw a horizontal line at the two and a half inch mark. Again, from the top edge here, the next, the second line is going to be down at four and a quarter inches. You draw a horizontal line, horizontal line. and every time you're doing um, each of the measurements in the pattern, you're always going to measure from this top edge to, to get your measurements. So draw all your horizontal lines, which is going to be six of them. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and um, uh, start placing your interfacing pieces. Uh, the first two pieces of interfacing are going to be placed a quarter of an inch down 
from this top raw edge and centered in between uh, that um, vertical line that you've drawn. You'll skip your first line that you've drawn, come down to your second line that you've drawn, and you're going to place just beneath that line that you drew your next set of interfacing. Skip the next line, go ahead and place on, on the following line, skip, and then place your interfacing. So here you go. Right, once you've done that, it's time to begin folding. Um, the way that I like to do my folding is I like to start off by flipping it to the right side. All right, and then what I do is I have the top closest to me that I marked as top. When I fold it over, I'm folding it over to look for that first line that I've drawn, and I fold it on that line and iron it. The next thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and flip it back to the wrong side. All right, and then I am kind of looking for this top edge, and this is also the line that I've drawn, um, the top edge of the interfacing. It helps to guide me, because uh, once I start to do the fold, you don't really see um, where that line is. Um, so I can kind of use the interfacing, as you can see here, um, as, as a guide to where that fold needs to be placed. I fold it over and press it with the iron. I flip the whole unit over again. Okay, this is gonna allow me to see the next line whenever I flip it, and I kinda have to turn it towards you to see it, but it's starting to disappear, but that's the next line right there. So I'm gonna fold it on there, and I'll press it with an iron, okay? The next thing that I wanna do is flip it back over, okay? And it's gonna um, be right here on this line here, so as I'm kinda getting everything flipped over, cause I gotta bring that, that top exposed over, I kinda use my interfacing to help me again, and you're gonna press it with your iron. And we gotta continue doing the same, the same thing. Uh, flipping it over to find their line, pressing it, flipping it back. This is the line I'm gonna do. And you gotta get that whole top section out, kinda work with it. And find your section here, okay? And then here is the two card slot pieces right there. All right, now let's go ahead and sew each top edge. Um, I'm picking up that first card slot section here and letting everything kind of fall away from it. And we're gonna go ahead and top stitch, stitch that uh, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, you might have noticed that I always sew with my zipper foot. Um, I just prefer using that. It gives me a nice one eighth of an inch uh, guide at the edge of the presser foot. Um, so that's kind of what I always use. The only time I really change it out is if I have to use my Teflon foot for vinyl. Okay, so let's reset this so you can see what it's going to look like here. So there's the, the top um, card slot there, top stitched. Here's your back just so you can see what that's going to look, what it looks like. All right, so now we're going to pick up the second row of top of card slots let everything kind of fall away from itself and just do that one um, that has the interfacing in between and I'm gonna reset it again so you can see what we got here all right so there's the second row now we're gonna pick up this last row There we go. We have all of our card slots now um, top stitched. So that's what it's looking like. The next step that we need to do is we got to go ahead and base stitch um, the left and the right side here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I like to base stitch uh, my card slots in this direction, kind of from the bottom up. Um, that way it doesn't kind of catch these edges as I'm top stitching. And do this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Repeat for the other side. And you don't have to go all the way to the bottom. Just trying to keep it in place, all those folds, so they don't come unfolded. Okay, so now that now those are secured into place, 
Uh, the next thing we have to do is we kind of have to repeat this for the center. Um, I can see through my fabric, I can still see my center line, um, but if you're working with a darker fabric, you can just flip it over. You can see my center line, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance um, on the left and the right side. Um, not to, I'm not top stitching on the actual line I drew, just to the left and the right, because I want to cut on that line. And let me again go, I'm going to do it in this direction. That way, um, when I'm sewing, I'm not catching each of the little ledges here. Okay, there we go. We've got our um, card slots all ready. What I'm going to do now is go over to the cutting table and I'm basically going to just cut on that line that I drew, which is going to divide each of those card slots into two pieces. And then we'll come back to sew on the backings. Okay, I've divided my card slots in half. Um, now I want to take one of my card slot back pieces, right side together, place it right over top of your card slots. All right, for one set, we're going to go ahead and top stitch both the top and the bottom edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, while the second one, we're only going to top stitch the very top of the card slot, so only the top portion um, at a quarter of an inch. This bottom one we're going to leave open. All right. Now what we're going to do um, for this one, uh, since we kind of created a tube, we're just going to go ahead and turn it right side out. Go ahead and take this over to the iron and give it a good press. Um, and then I'm going to come back and I'm only going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along this top edge of the card slot. I'm not doing the bottom one, only the top. So I'm going to do that in a minute. Let's go ahead and get this one sewn. So just the top edge. So to show you here. So there's our card slots. Just sewing the top edge shut. For this one, we're just going to flip it and take it to the iron and press the seam flat. And again, we're going to top stitch this top edge. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done off camera and I'll show you uh, the end result in a moment. All right. I have top stitched the top edge of both of the card slots after I pressed them. So we have the one with the open bottom right here and then the one that's been closed off. And I wanted to show you in the wallet essentially which one um, each of those is. So this one right here is the one that we've already um, top stitched uh, and closed the top and the bottom here. So that's going to be that card slot. And then this is the one that's going to be at the bottom. So the one that has the opened end will be placed at the bottom, which I'll show you how to do it later on. Just wanted to show you there. All right, so now our card slots are all ready. Let's go ahead and move on um, to the next step. All right, let's go ahead and move on into doing our zipper pocket. Um, as you can see here, I've already done a little bit of it, and that's because I was filming, and apparently um, the filming stopped at some point, so I had to back out all of my stitches and, and rip out my stitches. Um, so what I've gone ahead and done is taken everything back to this part here in the pattern where we are adding our zipper ends to each of our zippers that are cut down to 6 and 3 fourths inch long. And here's just an example real quick. This is our zipper end. We're going to fold it in half, um, the, um, matching those short raw edges, pressing it with an iron, opening it back up, and then you're going to go ahead and fold it in towards the center and press again, and then fold one more time um, and give it a final press. This is going to be our zipper end, and what you want to do is place that on um, each end of your zipper, just like this. You're going to go ahead and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, or excuse me, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So repeat that for all four sides. And then what I went ahead and did on all of these is I just trimmed any excess down to be even with the zipper tape. Um, so that's the first step in preparing your zipper pocket. The next thing that we want to do is we want to grab our um, exterior uh, zipper pocket piece that I have right here. We're going to find the side that has the eight inch side and you're going to go ahead and lay your zipper face down 
making sure that your zipper pull is to the left hand side. What I want to now do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to base stitch this into place. And you'll need to have your zipper foot on your machine if you don't have it already. Um, and make sure you pull that zipper pull out of the way um, as you're zipping or as you're sewing. And then I didn't mention here either is I did go ahead and center this zipper um, on the zipper panel. I did that by clipping notches in my zipper tape as well as the um, exterior zipper panel here. Um, and I just did that by folding it in half and then just clipping with my scissors a little notch here. All right, so I've got that first one done. I'm going to repeat the process for the bottom one. So again, I want to make sure my zipper pull is to the left. I'm placing my zipper face down on the... Uh, exterior zipper pocket piece uh, matching up the centers and sewing that um, with a base stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance All right. there we have that okay the next thing that we want to do is we want to grab one of our lining pieces we're going to place that um, right side down, and my right side is this side right here. So I'm going to sandwich the zipper in between. So I've got the wrong side of the zipper facing up, the right side of my fabric facing down on that, and we're matching everything up, all of our edges. And we're going to sew this now at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just moving my zipper out of the way. Um, you can certainly clip this into place. I'm not going to bother. Okay, and there's that piece right there. Um, this fabric seems to have a little bit more of a stretch or a give to it. So as I was sewing it, it did um, stretch out a little bit longer. So I'll just trim that even in a moment. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So we're going to flip this over, right side down. We're going to go ahead and place. The lining piece on top and so with the um, quarter of an inch seam allowance all right this is what it's looking like so far what I'm gonna do is open up these two pieces to expose the zippers and I'm gonna just kind of move that lining behind and we're gonna start working on this side now what I want to do is I want to grab my other exterior pocket piece zipper pocket piece here Place it right sides together, uh, making sure that I'm matching up that 8 inch side. Let me measure that. That is the 8 inch side, making sure uh, your zipper is centered over that exterior pocket piece, zipper pocket. And we're going to sew this again at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to start. So I'll go ahead and get that done, but this is what the one side is going to look like right here. And then this is the back side. Okay, so if we open that up, we're starting to see um, how the pocket's coming along. Um, so I'm gonna, if I were to finish it off, this is kind of what it's looking like without doing the other part. So I went like this. You can kind of see here's one side of the pocket, and this is going to be the other side of the pocket. What I need to do now. Is I need to go ahead and attach the other lining piece here. So this is the third lining piece, right side down on top of the zipper, matching the sides up. And this time we're doing the quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna pull that zipper out of the way. There we have that side. Now we're going to reverse and what we need to do now is we need to bring, so you can kind of see here how everything going on. So we've got one lining piece here, a zipper, the exterior, 
we've got our two lining pieces here with the zipper in the middle. What I'm going to do now with this exterior is I'm going to bring this up to meet the zipper right here. And we're going to match um, the center notches that we've notched out already. And sew this at a um, eighth of an inch seam allowance. It's a beautiful day here in Florida today, so we have our windows open, so you can probably hear the crows and the birds out there um, in the background. All right, that is now sewn on. So we're gonna take our last uh, lining piece here. We're gonna go uh, right sides down on top of the wrong side of the zipper and match up the edges and sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, so this is what we've got so far. So the inside here in the tube is the right side of our exterior piece and then we have all of our uh, lining pieces here on the outside. So what I'm gonna do before I finish this up is since my lining pieces uh, stretched a little bit when I was sewing it, I'm just gonna go ahead and get everything um, trimmed up so that everything's nice and even. So I'm gonna come back in just a moment to show you the next step after I just trim up those ends here. So you can see like right here, it kind of stretched so it's, it's longer than the other, even though my cut pieces to start with were exactly eight inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that all trimmed even and I'll come right back. All right, now that I've trimmed up all of my edges to be even, what I need to do now is make sure that one of my zipper uh, zippers is open. And I am going to start at these um, top edges here and get these kind of pulled uh, flush with each other. And we're going to match up the other side as well um, and kind of squishing the zipper um, so it kind of puckers out. And then we're going to go ahead and clip this into place. I'm going to do that with the opposite side as well. And then let's go to the other side, do the same. All right, now what I want to do is, it says in the pattern to pull the lining taut. So what, that, what that's referring to is you can see how we have these loose pieces of lining. I want to get these pulled nice and taut um, and tight here against the exterior piece. So I'm just kind of pulling that and getting it pulled down nice and tight, clipping it into place. Do that for all four sides. And I also, this doesn't really matter too much, but I like to have this, the same overlap. So there's a little bit of an overlap here, so I want the top to overlap. And then you can see here it's not the same, so I'm just overlapping it. It's just, just a little peeve of mine. It doesn't really make a big difference, but so get that all over there. All right, so that is the lining pieces. And again, this is going to be addressed later, and it'll make sense later whenever we attach this piece up to the wallet lining itself. For now, what we're going to do is we're basically going to be creating a French seam. Uh, since we're sewing this to start with down the left and the right side at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, um, we are going to start doing that. And then we're going to um, take this whole thing, turn it right side out, and sew again at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's start by doing the eighth of an inch seam allowance down both sides. Again, making sure that you're keeping that lining taut against the exterior. Okay, there is one side. Alright, now what we want to do is with the um, one of the sides that we left open, we're going to go ahead and turn this right side out. out and, um, we can come back and clip any of these threads, which I'll do later. And you might need a turning tool or some um, blunt scissors to poke all of these corners out, or you might be able to use your fingers. All right, once you do that, kind of roll your seams and get them um, laid flat here on the edges. I'm gonna take this over to the iron um, and press this down, all these edges. 
I'm also going to trim off any extra threads I have. And then we are going to come back and top stitch down the left and the right side at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is going to encase that raw edge. You probably can't see this here on camera, but this raw edge here, it's going to be encased and you will no longer see that. Okay, I've got those threads clipped off and I've pressed my edges. Now I'm going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance down both the left and the right side. Okay, now that I've done that, if you look on the inside here, those edges now, um, all those raw edges are now encased, um, so you don't see them. I just need to clip this thread. I don't have my clippers with me right here, but I'll do that in a moment. Now what I like to do is, um, I'm, I'm just going to be setting this aside for later on. Um, so in the moment, I like to kind of get it used to being bent in half. Um, so I'm going to find my center by folding it in half. And then I just clip it into place. And we're just going to set this aside uh, for later when we go ahead and add it to our lining piece. Uh, let's work on our phone pocket flap now. So grab your exterior piece and your lining piece. Um, we're going to go ahead and put these right sides together. And we're going to go ahead and, and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the left, the bottom, um, rounded edge and the right side. Leave this top straight edge open. Alright, now you can go ahead and clip your curves and reduce your seam allowance to an eighth of an inch. I'm not going to clip my curves because I think it's going to be fine here. Let's turn this right side out. And one thing I didn't mention, um, which this would have been done earlier, but with our exterior piece, we want to make sure that we um, have our SF-101 or our SoFuse ironed onto it. That's the whole entire size of the um, phone pocket flap. And then we're also placing um, a piece of either Deco Light or SoFuse Plus. Um, based upon the pattern piece that I have on here as well and ironing it. Um, that's going to keep the uh, top three-eighths of an inch um, without any of the deck of a light or the Sofuse Plus, um, but it does come down all the way to the bottom here. All right, I went ahead and pressed this with an iron and I went around and top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along with the same edge that we just sewed. Um, I've also gone ahead and marked at five eighths of an inch up from the center here. This is going to be for a magnetic snap. I'm going to be placing the female end of the magnetic snap on my flap. If you prefer to use the male end, be my guest and do that. I don't think there's any standard. It's just, this is what I like to do. Um, so I've used my washer um, from my snap and I placed it on the dot that I found um, to be the center at 5 eighths of an inch. Use my removable marking pen to mark off where the washers were. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and use my seam ripper. And I'm making sure that I'm only going through the lining piece. So here's my lining, not my exterior. I kind of put my hand in here and um, use my seam ripper to make the, slit, the cuts in the, for the slits. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and insert your magnetic snap. So you can see it's in there. I'm going to grab some additional scrap piece of interfacing to place over that. Um, I think I'm going to grab some SoFuse Plus um, just to kind of protect the fabric. All right, I have some um, foam, or excuse me, some fleece interfacing that I'm going to use because that's what I had handy here. I'm going to place my washer over top. And I'm just using a tool to go ahead and press the prongs to the outside. So 
So if you can see in there, that's what I've got going on. Now what I'm going to do is get a little piece of duct tape to again protect this side of the fabric from the prongs. Right there, that's what it's going to look like inside. And our flap is done at this point. We're going to um, go ahead now and grab our exterior, your wallet exterior, and your flap, your main flap here. What we want to do is we want to find the center of our exterior, and this is the side that. It's the shorter side, so it's the nine inch side. Let's find our center. We're gonna also find the center of our um, flap for the phone. We're gonna place the flap um, down on top of it. So you're gonna have the right side of the flap uh, facing up and the right side of the exterior facing up match up those center notches And I'm going to top stitch this just to baste it into place um, at an eighth of an inch Okay, now that's on I'm gonna go ahead and grab the um, flap for our wallet, so the exterior flap here. Match up the edges. And we're going to sew this at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Basically the um, this part's going to be 3 eighths of an inch and then when we're kind of doing our final stitching um, placing the lining and the exterior together and we go around the outside of that that's at 3 eighths of an inch as well um, the majority of the um, interior parts of the wallet you'll have already probably noticed that those were done at a quarter of an inch seam allowance so we're doing this again at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance all right, I've taken this over to the iron and I've kind of pressed it with the flap up. That's going to bring the uh, seam allowance to the bottom of the wallet. And we're going to top stitch this here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. By top stitching it with the flap up, it's going to give our flap just a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a roundedness to it. It's, it's a, a nicer look, I think. Okay. Now that that's done, the next thing that we need to do is we need to work on our um, actual phone pocket itself. So you're going to grab your exterior phone pocket piece and your lining piece. Both of them are going to have SF-101 or your sew fuse on it. And then in addition, you'll want to go ahead and iron on your Decaville light or your sew fuse plus. Um, make sure that it's centered here on your piece. Um, that way it stays out of the seam allowance. As I'm sitting here editing my video footage, I realized that I am missing a couple of files. They went corrupt, so I can't show you that here in the video. So to substitute, I've inserted a photo from the pattern um, of the missing video footage here. Uh, I'll explain what I've done. I took the phone pocket exterior piece, um, as well as the pattern piece, which I folded in half. I laid it on top of the exterior piece so that I could ma mark my placement for my magnetic snap. And just like I did with the flap, I went ahead and installed my magnetic snap. Um, from there, I took the exterior and the lining phone pocket pieces, placed them right sides together. I sewed with a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top straight edge, both of the square cutouts and just about an inch in from the bottom straight edge on the left and the right side as shown here um, in this photograph. Uh, then the footage uh, picks up right after I've gone ahead and turned this right side out and pressed it with an iron. All right, I've got this pressed with an iron now. So what I wanna do now is come back, top stitch at this top edge, as well as these corners that we've already top stitched right here. 
Uh, the only thing is we're not worrying about anything at the bottom at this moment, so don't do any stitching at the bottom. We're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and then this is still left open. I Like I said, I turned in the raw edges like that. Um, this will be closed up um, here in a moment when we attach this um, to the um, exterior. Okay, now you want to grab your um, exterior piece and we are going to measure down three inches um, from where we placed this uh, foam pocket flat. So get your ruler and measure down three inches. You can use um, uh, a grid ruler and do it that way as well if you want. Just going to make a couple of markings here along the middle and the sides. That'll help me place the phone pocket. Okay, and now we want to take our phone pocket and we're going to take the right side and put it uh, down on the right side. So right sides together and it's basically going to be upside down. So Ultimately what we want is we want it to be like this and this is going to close up and be our phone pocket but we're going to sew it kind of upside down. So find that three inch line that you just uh, created or your three inch markings. Okay, And place this on the three inch line there. Now um, you could use some double sided tape here if you want to help you keep it in a place but I think I'll be fine here um, with just going ahead and kind of holding it into place and sewing it. Um, you want to make sure that it's centered. There is going to be an overhang, just a, just a little bit, um, about an eighth of an inch or so on each end. We want it to be like that. So I'm just getting it centered here. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch this on with two parallel rows of stitching at an eighth of an inch um, away from this outer edge as well as an eighth of an inch away from the first row of stitching. I'm going to switch over my thread color right now. I want to have uh, white on the top. I've got a little bit of puckering here on my fabric. Um, again, because I think because this, this fabric just has a little bit more stretch to it. I'm not really worried about it because when you'll see here in a moment when I flip this right side up, it's so far down in that pocket, you're just never going to see it. So what we want to do now is we're going to take this and flip it and we want to basically get this positioned so that it is uh, got a half of an inch gap right here. Um, so if I take my roller, I can kind of take a look and see what I got here. So one half inch. So let's bring this top edge to where that half inch mark is. And now it's time to go ahead and make sure that those overhangs on the raw edges here um, are met up with the edge of the exterior. So move that over. And so you can see it kind of creates that pocket. Now, um, once we get this bag turned and all that, it's going to settle down and it won't be puckering out that much. Um, and then this is what it's going to look like when we close it up. So we got a nice little uh, pocket here for our cell phone. So now it's time to sew um, and base, this, base stitch this into place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to go grab my cell phone so you can see what it looks like in there. There you go. Got the cell phone dropped right in there. You can see it's spacious. Um, there's definitely more room um, for those larger phones like the iPhone, the 6S Plus, and whatever those newer models are. Okay. 
So there we go. That portion is now complete. Um, the next step that we need to do is we are going to start working on our uh, lining and getting all the pieces that we've prepped um, ready. Uh, oh, one thing I almost forgot was we actually need to go ahead and iron on the Decaville Lite or the Sofuse Plus to this exterior piece. I technically should have done it before I added this pocket. Um, I forgot to do that, but it's, it's, it's really easy. So we just want to go ahead and get it centered on here. Um, and I'm going to take this over to the iron. I'm going to iron on here, here. I'll open up my pocket and get my iron in here to get that all secured. So let me go do that real quick. All right, I got that um, Sofuse Plus or your deck of a light. I've got mine um, ironed on the back here. So I'm going to set this aside. Now it's time to place our card slots on top of our lining piece that has the SF101 iron to the back or your Sofuse. Um, the first card slot you're going to go ahead um, and place is the one that you have sewn both the top and the bottom edge. You're going to place that at five inches up from the bottom raw edge. So with your ruler, go ahead and measure out five inches. You can also go to your, um, your cutting mat and with your grid ruler, just draw a five inch line as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and clip that into place. Now the second one that you're going to place is the one that um, has the unfinished end. We're going to go ahead and place that at the bottom, meeting up the bottom raw edges. We want to base stitch um, all four sides of these card slots into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We also want to sew this bottom um, edge here um, in place with an eighth of an inch seam, eighth of an inch seam allowance. It's important not to sew anything at the bottom here. Don't sew it. Leave that completely open. have our two um, money slots with their card slots so the lining um, is almost finished the next thing that we want to do is we want to get our piece of elastic which is going to be for our uh, pen holder uh, we want to take that and fold it in half and you want to take that raw edge and that's going to be facing down we're going to find the center here of our um, lining piece and we're going to center it in between the two pieces here. So you can kind of use the lines of your card slots to help you um, find the center. And then I place it just a hair below the center. That way the raw edges are going to be um, just beneath the center here. And I'm going to use, just use my hand here to hold it into place and stitch this into place. That's going to get sewn even more secure um, in just a moment here when we add our uh, zipper pocket. So grab your zipper pocket pieces um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the clips. And since we already kind of had it uh, folded in half, um, we're just going to kind of um, find the center here. You can eyeball it or you can measure it. And I want to go ahead and find the center. And I could use a piece of double sided tape if I want there to secure it into place, but I'm just going to um, place it. Here centered like this and then I kind of let it fall while I'm holding it here and then take a look at it and see if I need to make any adjustments that looks good um, now I want to take and sew three parallel lines that are an eighth of an inch away from each other and what's going to happen there is it's also going to kind of hide this raw edge right here of the um, the elastic and it's also going to go ahead and close up um, the, I'm not going to show you because I don't want to, uh, to 
to move everything here, but it's going to sew up that um, opening in the lining here when we do that because there was that little bit of an overlap there. So um, you can certainly go ahead and draw um, a line here to kind of start off um, to get your first row of stitching and then sew on either side of that if you want. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do this um, by eye. Let me switch out my thread. I want to go back to my navy blue thread um, and I'll get these stitched up. Now we need to work on our strap connector for our D-rings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So here's our strap connector. What we want to do is we want to draw a line down the center. And just like we did with our handles, we're going to go ahead and fold in um, to meet the center line here. The next video clip, the file was corrupt, so that's missing. So I wanted to explain with the pattern piece here what I did. I went ahead after I pressed that strap connector down, I added in two D-rings on both sides of the strap connector. I folded over that short raw edge by a quarter of an inch on each side and pinned it into place. Now the other option that you can do is if you're not intending to make a crossbody strap for this wallet and you only want to do a wristlet strap, you can take that strap connector and cut it down to three and a half inches fold in those uh, short raw edges to kind of butt up against each other um, when your D-ring is on there and then you can secure that into place basically on the left hand side of the wallet lining as shown here in the pattern piece. Um, so that's another option for you as well and then you would just uh, basically sew a rectangular box uh, to secure it in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now we're going to go ahead and continue on showing you how to place that strap connector on the wallet lining. All right, now I've gone ahead and added a row of uh, double-sided tape to the um, wrong side of the strap connector. I'm going to go ahead, and I've also gone ahead, and I've measured up one inch from the top edge of the card slot here and drew a line. I also uh, indicated my center. I've also found the center of my um, strap connector here. It's almost hard to see now because it's disappeared, but right here's the center of the strap connector. What I want to do is I'm going to remove the paper backing to the double-sided tape and place that down. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to place this um, where the bottom edge of your strap connector is on the line. That's what it's going to be looking like. So now it's time to go ahead and uh, top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance along the top and the bottom edge here. Um, we're also going to go ahead and mark one inch in from the edge because we don't want to sew the entire way over. So carefully going to go ahead and measure in one inch and make a mark so I know where I need to sew. And do the same for the other side. Okay, now let's go ahead and get this uh, sewn. So I'm going to be basically sewing a rectangle, starting where I have the one inch marking. So now that has gone ahead and secured our strap connector in place. It's also secured in those raw edges. If you want at this point, you could place a rivet um, on both of these sides just to give it a little bit more out of security. I don't think it's going to need it because um, it's a pretty lightweight wallet here. Um, but again, the reason why that I designed it like this is so that you can keep your D-rings kind of tucked in, either doing it like this. Um, so that way when you're not using your D-rings, you don't see it from the outside of your wallet. Or you can come in and also when you're kind of folding it, you'll fold them in like this. Um, that way they're kind of tucked out of the way. So that completes the lining portion of the wallet. 
Now it is time for us to go ahead and place right sides together, uh, clip it into place, and we are going to go ahead and sew with a um, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all around the left, the top curved edge, and the right side. We are not going to sew anything here at the bottom. That is going to be left undone because this is where we're going to birth the wallet in a moment. So let me get this all um, pinned into place. Um, or excuse me, clipped into place, and I'll actually top stitch it and show you um, at that point where we're at. All right, got all that trimmed down. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this right side out through the bottom hole. All right, look at all your seamings. Make sure you caught everything um, and that it looks good. Everything looks good. So here's a little preview. What I'm going to do now is um, trim off all these extra threads. I'm going to go take it over to my iron and press it. And then I'll come back and um, show you how to do the next step. Okay, I have uh, pressed this with an iron. And now I've come in and I've put in the turn portion of my twister and my turn lock here. Uh, just like I did with the magnetic snap, um, got the extra interfacing here um, and my washer on. This has been measured up two inches from the center bottom raw edge here. Now, if you are doing a magnetic snap, um, if you're just making this a wallet only, um, you want to go ahead and um, put your magnetic snap here. Um, you're also going to go ahead and get your wallet folded up at this point and find your placement that you want to put your magnetic snap at um, and then use your hands here um, to put your magnetic snap only on the lining. So I've got my, my hand in the middle here um, and put that, put that in place at this point in time. I'm going to put this other portion of my turn lock in after I do my top stitching. That way it's out of the way. So at this point in time, um, we are ready to go ahead and um, sew up this bottom raw edge. And to do that, uh, we're going to go where this money slot is here in the back. Um, and we're going to basically take this piece right here, so you can see. We're going to go ahead and kind of flip it, just like this. Okay, from here, we want to get it all pulled tight. And I'm going to clip it into place. Okay, so this portion, we're not sewing it with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Instead, we're going to sew this at 1 quarter of an inch seam allowance. I just want to clean up the extra little threads here. And basically, you want to sew this, or excuse me, trim this down to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you do that, you're gonna base, you're gonna go ahead and flip it back um, the way it was. And this is essentially doing another French seam here like we did on the card slots. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and do the final top stitching. I like to go ahead and get my top stitching done uh, kind of right here as where I begin um, at the kind of the fold portion here. So let me go ahead and start doing that. And I also top stitch uh, with the uh, wrong side, the lining side up here, I should say. So the lining side is going to be up. Top stitching this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, All right, here she is all completed. I've installed my turn lock. Here is the inside. Got my pen handy and I have my money in here. And then I have my phone in the back here. So all of my essentials are nice and handy in my fold and go wallet. I can go ahead and carry it with my wristlet strap if I want. Carry it over my shoulder, cross body. And the last way I wanted to show you was the uh, fanny pack style. So just go ahead and wrap that strap right around your waist. You can even feed it through your belt loops if you want. And you just carry it like this, hands free. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Purchase the pattern at SewYoursPatterns.com. Post pictures of your completed fold and go wallet in our Facebook group. Now it's time for you to go ahead and sew yours.